guys, welcome to the species breakdown of the aardvark. In this species breakdown series, we'll be taking a close look at all of the species in Planet Zoo and going over their animations, what habitat enrichment items they can use. We'll look at their Zoopedia, and then at the very end, we will talk about some habitat design ideas. So as I mentioned, first up in this episode, we'll be talking all about the aardvark, and I have a few of them running around in front of us, including an adorable little baby. And I was lucky enough that in sandbox mode, I was able to get an albino guy. So you can see this one very clearly is our albino aardvark. I'll show you here. It says albino white skin. And we have three other skin variants to take a look at as well. We have this guy right here, which is going to be pink brown skin walking across there. And then we have two lighter variants. So this one being pink gray skin and this one over here being sandy pink skin. I will go ahead ahead and put an image up on the screen now so that you can take a look at all of these side by side. You can see they're very subtle changes between the three of them or the four of them. <laughs> one of them has a stark contrast, of course. Our albino one looks nothing like the other three. But other than that, just very light color variations between the other three. So yeah, you can see them all running around in here, including our adorable little baby. We'll take a very close look at this little guy very quickly. Babies look just like the adults, just a much smaller version. So they have the color variants as well. This one being pink brown skin. So it's going to be the, the darker version of that. But they look just like mom and dad, just a tiny version. So before we go ahead and jump in and look at the habitat enrichment, let's go ahead and take a look at the Zoopedia for these guys real quick. Obviously, the first page here is going to be some general information we can see that they are listed as least concerned, which is great. If we go to the natural habitat tab is where you can see they are from Africa. They like the grassland and tropical biomes. And then below here, minimum habitat requirements. You're looking at 330 meters squared for one and 390 meters squared for two. You really don't have to go above that though because they really don't like groups more than two. But overall, really not looking at large space requirements for these guys. Only land requirement, no other climbing or water or any other uh, diving requirements for these guys. And then very low grade and short fences needed for them. If we go on to the species data tab is where you can see here, they do only like groups of one to two, like I was saying. And if you're going to keep mixed gender uh, in one habitat, you're going to want one male and one female. If you want to keep two of the same, so two females or two males can get along as well. They are shy around people. So if you're going to put them in franchise mode, make sure that they have lots of hiding spaces and places to get away from the guests. And you can make walkthrough habitats for these guys. So yes, guests can enter. And then here's just a little bit more information about them. If you want to pause and read it, you are welcome to. The last thing that I want to show off is that they do actually actually have an interspecies enrichment with the meerkat, meaning that if you put them in a habitat with the meerkat, they actually do get an interspecies enrichment bonus off of sharing the habitat with the meerkats. So there you go. That is all about them and their Zoopedia. Now let's go ahead and take a look at their enrichment items. So we have all the enrichment items that they can use over here on the right of this little habitat. We have the foraging area here, another little foraging thing right here. Some of the boxes, the rubber ducky, the ice ball, the uh, two little blow up balls, the rubbing pillar, rubbing pads. They can use these both, including the babies. However, the baby does clip a little bit with this one. I'll show you that a little bit later. We have a sprinkler and then I did include the burrow, although this is technically not an enrichment item. It's a bedding item. Um, it's kind of fun and they obviously go inside of it and hang out and sleep in the burrow. So I included that as well. They do not use the smaller burrow. They only use the bigger burrow. So that is it for their enrichment. Let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at all of their or most of their 
animations in the game. So starting off with their eating, unfortunately you can't really see too much because there's too much food in this bowl. But when we move on to the drinking animation, you'll see here their little tongue is actually going in and out. How cute is that? So this is obviously one of the little babies, but this is the animation that they do when they're foraging, when they're eating, all that kind of stuff. We'll watch it again just because it's absolutely adorable. They just kind of stick that tongue in and out, almost kind of like a little lizard and, uh, and drink up the water or eat up their food. Next we just have them running. I think they have a bit of a silly run, but they don't run very fast. I mean, they're not very fast animals to start with. Then they will scritchy scratch their belly either standing like we saw here, or sometimes they'll lay down and then eventually they'll scratch their little tummy with that left leg as well, just scratching with their little nails. Pretty cute ambient little behavior. Then we move on to some animations with each other. This first one being their fighting animation, which is pretty interesting to watch. It's not very, um, what's the word? It's not very fierce. They kind of just stand up on their legs, push each other around, um, using their little claws to kind of scratch at each other. But you can see there, the one on the right is gonna win. The one on the left is gonna run away. But then we have a much nicer animation. This is their mating animation. This first one's gonna be a little bit glitchy, but we'll watch it again from a different perspective and get a little bit better of a view on it. But they're just gonna kind of rub their little faces together. It's very sweet, very simple. You can see it here again from a little bit different of an angle. Um, unfortunately, you can't really see their faces on this one, but this one is far less glitchy than the first one. They don't kind of morph into each other <laughs> like they do in the first one. And then next, like I mentioned already, they do use the large burrow. So this is them entering the large burrow. They just kind of walk into that black void and then walk down. They enter their little burrow. He's gonna walk over onto the straw there and then have a little nap. I kind of wish that they did more inside the burrow than just sleep. Now I know it's, it's technically a sleeping object, right? It's a bedding object, but I kind of wish that they went in here and maybe, I don't know, cuddled together or did something else, but basically they just walk straight in, they lay down, and eventually they just kind of go to sleep and then lay there until they're done. And then when they emerge, they just kind of walk back out of the tunnel. So that is them using the large burrowing object. They don't use the small burrow, which again, I, I kind of wish that they would. Um, but anyway, we're gonna move on to the enrichment items. First one being this little foraging thing. It's a bit glitchy, but you can see they just kind of stick their tongue in and out in these little holes here on this, I think it's supposed to be a log or a termite mound or something. Anyway, they do the same little animation on the foraging tray right here. They just walk over and they kind of just eat stuff. They really don't have too many unique animations for these guys. They are somewhat boring, although I am saving my favorite animation for the very last, so we'll get to that in just a minute. We're moving on to the rubbing pillars here. This one's actually kind of fun. They just kind of rub themselves on this little scratching pillar here. They do the exact same animation with the newer rubbing pad, the one with the bark on it. I'll play this one one more time so you can see it, and then we'll move on and We'll see that other one, but you can see they kind of just sniff around, slowly walk up, and then they're gonna rub their right shoulder all the way down their side to their butt. They kind of remind me of a little pig in this animation uh, for some reason, but yeah, getting a nice little scratch on the right side of their body. And then the baby does actually use it as well, but unfortunately <laughs> you can see it's the same animation, but the baby is so small and it gets too close to the rubbing thing and it kind of goes inside of it. So not the cleanest animation, but you can see it's pretty much the same thing the adult did, just with a little baby. The adults do this on this one as well, um, but it's a little, little glitchy with this new one. Then we move on to a couple not so exciting things. Honestly, most of the enrichment items, they kind of walk up to them, scratch the ground, and then that's basically it. So this animation that you're seeing here with this scent marker is the same one that is seen with uh, here, the duck. Um, he had already scratched and then he's gonna kind of run by it and push it off to the side. Same thing that we see with the sprinkler. 
and the ball and the foraging barrel, basically everything. You see the sprinkler, he's just kind of standing in it. He doesn't really do anything special. He's just like, okay, cool, awesome, and then runs away. But this is my favorite one. Check out how cute with this little box. He goes inside and then he even stands up on his legs with the box and on his head and then shakes it off and throws it to the side. We'll watch it one more time because I think it's absolutely adorable. And then after this, we're going to go ahead and jump in and talk a little bit about husbandry, habitat design, and just aardvark, aardvark facts. That's a hard one to say altogether. So here we are in Mayberry Park Zoo. This is a habitat that will be coming out on the channel very shortly, but obviously for our aardvark friends. So in making habitats for aardvarks, one of the most important things is the fact that they are actually nocturnal. So you can see this habitat here, I have made an outdoor section, which they are enjoying right now, but there's also an indoor section. When I was doing research about their care and husbandry in captivity, a lot of what I found said that they do best in a nocturnal house setting, just because that is what keeps them active during the times of the day that guests would be viewing them. So it obviously makes them a little bit more of an exciting animal. However, I dislike interiors so much that I want to show you guys um, a different variation of what their habitat could look like and I found a lot of reference pictures that looked very similar to this. So you can see they're walking around in here. We've got all their main needs. We have some water down here. We do have a termite mound. I do wish that they would have used the larger ones that the giant anteater could use because it looks a little bit more termite mound-ish to me but that is their enrichment in there for them or where the keepers would probably feed them because likely they would be wanting to be fed in something like this rather than just a plain bowl to keep them interested and to kind of follow their natural history a little bit. They will walk around and eat up termites like off the ground or that they find in logs and stuff like that. Um, so again, wanting to follow that natural history. I do have two burrows in here, which unfortunately they haven't really used yet because as you can see, I have raised up the terrain around them to make them a little bit more integrated but as we'll get into in just a moment oh is he actually gonna go in there as we're standing ah he's gonna prove me wrong perfect he's gonna go in the burrow um, but as you'll see when we get to the reference pictures in just a minute most of their habitats are big open dirt plots like this now I did make this somewhat pretty for guests in putting some upper planter areas and a very low lying back mud wall fence. These guys obviously don't need a whole ton of like, they don't need like hot wire or anything like that. Just a high enough wall where they cannot climb out. And then inside their little den area is very simple. It's concrete on the bottom with some straw for them to lay in. Very clean utilitarian walls, obviously doors that keepers could get in and out. Um, everything that I saw said that they are an open contact animal so that keepers do actually go in there with them. So I did not build any sort of shifting thing where we would have to put the aardvarks away so the keepers could come in, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at some of the pictures that I have for you. This first one being very similar to what I've built here. You can see on the right hand side is their little den area with what looks to be like a little heating lamp and then a big dirt area on the left hand side where they could come out and walk around. Very little planting um, because they're going to dig a whole bunch so my habitat probably has a little bit too much greenery in it but I just I didn't want it to look too plain of course so I probably added a little bit too much of that drin grass but we're gonna go with it the next picture you can see again is some grasses out here but more just just dirt just dirt all over the place little holes all over the place unfortunately this kind of terrain is really not easily um, recreated in Planet Zoo because of the terrain tools but they have little divots and, and terrain uh, variations all over the habitat from where you can see they were foraging and digging there's a little black bowl up there and then obviously those doors are back to the nocturnal sections uh, or backstage service area for this aardvark habitat this third picture 
is a completely indoor habitat, what I believe is an actual nocturnal house with just the lights on, um, because I did find some other reference pictures of this habitat with the lights a little bit darker. So this would be, again, more of a nocturnal house, but very, very little foliage, lots and lots of dirt, logs, things like that for them to run around in. The fence is not very high, but again, high enough that they can't climb out of it. And then this one even has like a little fake backdrop mural that simulates, you know, grasslands or open landscape or something like that. And then the very last picture is an inside view of a little nocturnal house. We have a little puzzle feeder here. I'm not quite sure if this is for an aardvark specifically, although it certainly would fit. The only thing that makes me question it is this thing hanging from the ceiling is the aardvarks really are not going to climb or do anything like that. They might be able to reach like this bottom one or maybe the second one on their hind feet, but they're not going to be like climbing up this. So it makes me feel like this was maybe retrofitted for a different type of animal. But again, just lots of dirt, lots of logs, just pretty plain habitats. Um, so yeah, so aardvarks, of course, are mammals. They are considered a keystone species. Where did mine go? Are they still in their burrow? <laughs> They're making a very boring video for me by just hiding down in their burrow. But they are considered keystone species, meaning uh, that they are very important to the ecosystem that they live in. They do dig tons of burrows, which is why we've included two that some animals that live in their environment actually use once they have vacated them. Them. So that is why they're considered a keystone species is because they help make shelters for other animals that live in their ecosystem. They are going to eat primarily like bugs, grubs, stuff like that, which is why we have the little termite mound. And, uh, and yeah, that is all about the little aardvark guys. So let me know what you guys think about this type of series. Let me know what you think about the aardvarks. I am planning to go in alphabetical order. So next up, would be, I think, the African buffalo, um, I think is what is up next if we check the, <laughs> the Zoopedia and go in alphabetical order. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this, if you found it helpful at all, please do leave a like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content. Uh, again, this speed build will be up on the channel in just a couple days, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, I will talk to you in the next video. Bye!